Guys, check this out. You know you can do this in Illustrator? What's going on everybody? Today we're creating this layout. Y'all know why you're here. So let's get started. And we're actually gonna get started in Illustrator today. It's gonna help us make this cool blob effect that will be the anchor to our image. Once you're in Illustrator, it's very important that you know what kind of size of the magazine you're creating. So here I'm creating two spreads of letter size, which is eight and a half by 11 inches. You wanna create exactly that in your Illustrator as well. So I'll show you how to do that. So here in Illustrator, it will give you some templates or you can manually change it over here. And I'm just gonna make two artboards that are eight and a half by 11. Now, we're not gonna worry too much about the bleed. That'll happen in InDesign. So I'm gonna go ahead and just click create. All right, once you have that, we're actually gonna put both of these artboards together. So we're gonna go down to the artboard tool and just move these two right next to each other to mimic that of a magazine. Okay, after you've done that, we're gonna start by creating some circles. So go into your ellipse tool and I'm gonna hold shift to create perfect circles. Uh, and I'm gonna change the stroke and fill just so I can see where my circles are. Then I'm gonna hold alt to just copy the circle out so I have another circle. What you guys are gonna do, and this is super important that you guys follow the steps exactly, is you're going to select both of these circles, right click on them, and you're gonna go down to make compound path. So now both of these are going to be a part of one path. Okay, next we're gonna give this cool effect where it has that string pulling apart effect. So we're gonna highlight what we have here, go into window, make sure you have your appearance tab open, and we're gonna go down to add a new effect. Now we're going to go up to path, offset path, and this is the important part. We're gonna do this two times. Now the first time you're gonna make the offset, uh, let's say it's two inches, depending on how big your circle is. So two inches is probably good. We we'll want this to be round and I'm gonna hit okay. Now don't touch anything. We're gonna do this another time. So go down to effects, go down to path and then offset path. It's gonna ask you if you want to apply new effect, you're gonna click apply new effect. And for this time, this is super important, you're gonna hit negative two inches. And same thing, we're gonna make that round. And there it is, you can see it's got that effect already in here. Now, this next part is also very important. We want to change the size of these things so that we can manipulate the big and small bubbles. This is a little bit hard to do on Illustrator and it takes a little bit of practice, but what you're gonna do is click into this. So double click into the actual compound path. Then what we're going to do is drag your mouse to select this. So once you see the box appear around the circle, that's when you know it's gonna work. Now, in order to actually move the circle, you're gonna have to go to the middle and you can see that my cursor has a little symbol beside it. This is when you can actually drag this around. You can also make this bigger. So if I make this bigger and drag it around, you can see that the effect will stay so that it, it's got that pulling effect, but I can drag these uh, around. We know that we want to put a picture into this bubble effect. So it's very important that we know around what kind of proportions we're working with. This video is sponsored by myself because I'm proud to show you guys that we've came out with a new template that you guys can use and I believe it is one of the most versatile ones out there to create a super clean, super simple look that you can put into your magazine, you can put into your posters, you can put into your portfolios, you can put into your lookbooks, you can put, you get the point. We've got two different table of contents, we got 32 pages of layouts, we have the master pages set up for you with all the footers. We've got different grid systems that are in there so that you can change it around without breaking the overall flow. We have things like paragraph style set up for you. We have text wrap set up for pictures. We have text wrap set up for text. So just a bunch of things that's in there that's already set up for you that you can go ahead and just drag around and customize to whatever you want. To celebrate the launch of this product, it'll be 30% off for a limited time on our website. There'll be a link down in the description so if you wanna support the channel and get a really cool template, then go ahead and support with that. So if I have a photo that I'm already going to use like this one, I'm just gonna shrink this down a little bit so it's actually the size of my page. I'm gonna drag these guys out to basically wireframe something that makes sense. So for example, uh, we probably want to show the face a little bit. So this circle needs to be a little bit bigger. And then when that gets bigger, we'll move the other circle down a little bit. So we'll move this guy down. Play around with this until you figure something out that makes sense. Okay, I'm gonna work with something like this on the page. So if I change the stroke and fill, you guys can kind of see what's gonna be included in the photo and 
you know, I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, so once you have something like this, all we're going to do is open up InDesign. So keep this on one tab, we'll open InDesign in another. Okay guys, in InDesign, we want to create a new document and in this new document, we want to change it to inches. Eight and a half by 11, we're gonna have two facing pages. So we're gonna go ahead and change this to two. And we're actually gonna start at two because we don't really want a title page. And I'm gonna change the margins a little bit bigger. Maybe not that big, maybe 0 0.625. And then we're just gonna give it a standard bleed. So go ahead and create that. So once we have that created, all we're gonna do is copy that shape that we created in Illustrator directly over into InDesign. This is the shape that we just created in Illustrator. All I'm gonna do is control copy or copy, right click. You can also do this to copy. And then go into your InDesign and just paste. So the shape will come in, but you can see it's a little bit big on my page. So I'm gonna go ahead and just shrink it. And make sure we're shrinking this proportionally. We don't want it to adjust the sizing. You can see that if I actually drag this out, it stops being perfect circles. So you definitely don't wanna do that. So hold shift when you're actually sizing the frame and the shape. The good thing about InDesign is that any shape that comes into it, you can use as a frame. So dragging my image into it, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a fit frame proportionally. And you can see that my image is already looking pretty good in this page, right? So this is kind of the effect that we want and we already have it pretty well set in here. Now, if you want to move the position of the actual image, you're gonna need to double click into this shape and then it'll bring it around a brown border. So you guys can see that brown border over here. And if you just click inside the frame itself, you can move the image on the inside wherever you need it. If you want to enlarge it, you can also just hold that and enlarge this photo if you need. So adjust that however you guys need, uh, but I'm gonna go back to what I had in the beginning because it actually looked pretty good. Uh, I do want to give it another element over here and that's pretty easy to do. We just have to drag an ellipse frame tool. So you just have to right click on the rectangular frame tool, which is probably what you guys have it defaulted as. And then you go into the ellipse frame tool. So I'm gonna hold shift and drag out a perfect circle then I'm going to just position it until it makes sense. So this, you can see that it re requires a little bit of a bigger circle in order to match the radius of that inner circle there. And then what I'm going to do is click into this image and I'm gonna copy it. So control copy, and then I'm gonna click into this ellipse frame that we just created, and then I'm gonna hit paste into. So I'm right clicking and I'm hitting paste into. So you can see after I do that, this image is a continuation of what our actual shape was, which is really cool. We can also do one more down here. So I'm just dragging that all the way down. Now we're gonna give this a little bit of text to spice it up because it's not really a magazine without any text. So with this particular layout, we're gonna want a title on the left here and then a text wrap on the right so that the text is offset from the shape. So let's go ahead and create our title first. I'm gonna go into the type tool and just drag out a type box. Now we want this to say the title of what we're trying to do. So maybe this one is just LH Studio. And then we're gonna go ahead and change this to the font that we want. So I usually just use the Futura Bold. And in this case, I'm gonna make it 72. Why not? Go ahead and drag that out so that it's not cut off. And I'm actually gonna rotate this so that it is sideways. So in this particular layout, we kind of want this to be on the side like that. Now you can see that we want this to be right justified because we want to touch the top margin. So I'm going up and I'm hitting the right justify. If I do a preview here, that looks pretty good. Once we have the title in, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna just drag this out so that there's another one. And we're actually gonna change this to something smaller. So something that's kind of like a body text. So maybe we'll do like a 12, we won't use bold, we'll use something like a medium or even a book. Uh, and then just give it one line of filler text. Okay, great, once you're happy with that, we're gonna do the text on the other page. So what I'm gonna do is create a text box and we're going to use the type tool once again. So I'm dragging this out. Uh, we probably don't want this to be all the way uh, just because that seems to be the design trend if you want a nice clean layout. You wanna leave as much margin on the side as possible. And then I'm gonna give it a little bit of a placeholder text. Then you're gonna right click on this, go into text frame options. It's gonna bring up this window. So if I go ahead and switch the number of columns into two, you can see that it's gonna make two columns of text for me instead of the one. And that's perfect, we're gonna hit okay. 
So I'm dragging this all the way out so that it captures the bottom of our shape. Next, we're going to want the text to dodge the actual shape itself because right now it's cutting into the shape. If you're into that, that's totally cool. You can do that as a layout. But for us, we're going to want it to dodge this shape. So we're going to give it a text wrap effect. So first, we're going to go ahead and select the shape that we have made from Illustrator. Then we're going into Window and then we're going down all the way to Text Wrap right here. So it's going to bring up this window here. The one we're going to use is going to be wrap around object shape. So that's going to pick up all the curves of the shape that we made. And you can see immediately that our text is now dodging that shape. Now we want to make this a little bit bigger, the offset. So we're just going to adjust the offset a little bit more so that there's a nice buffer around our text and so that it's not right up to the shape itself. So I'm seeing that there is a little bit of room or space here uh, where a text bubble is. I've initially imagined this to be a place where I can put some additional text, maybe a quote, maybe something important that you want to emphasize. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag out a, another text box like this. But here's the problem. Since we have a text wrap on this shape that we made here, whatever text we're trying to do here is just going to try to dodge this shape altogether. Now, in order to get around that, we're going to right click on the text box, go to text frame options, and we're just going to check on the ignore text wrap down here. Click OK, and then we're actually going to make this into a right side up, and then we're going to make this a little bit smaller as well as middle justify. So I'm going to go ahead and middle flip justify that. And I'm just going to type in something here that we want to emphasize on the page. Now, we can stop right here. This already looks like a great image that you can put on any page, but I like to spice things up just a little bit to emphasize the actual design. So I'm going to go ahead and use the eyedropper tool, but we're going to pick a theme. So I'm right clicking on the eyedropper tool and we're going to the color theme tool. Now I'm going to go ahead and select the dominant color in the page, which is this orange. It's actually going to sample the entire picture and give us colors that might work with what's going on with the picture. So here you can see that we have some suggested colors. And if you check this little arrow over here, it'll give you different selections. Now we might want to go for something a little bit bright. So let's go ahead and use this and we'll use this darker red color. And all I'm going to do is highlight my text. It'll change it to that color. And we'll also highlight this text over here to change that color. We can also drag out a rectangle all the way to the edges of the page and then just go ahead and give that this as well. Now we'll have to move this to the back. So right click, arrange, send to back. Now I'm not a huge fan of this color. It's looking a little bit too dark. All right, this color looks pretty good to me. And the last thing I'm going to do is since black doesn't read super well on orange, I'm going to change it to the paper color, which is white and shabam. There it is. It looks pretty good. And yeah, that's all we need to do to make something this beautiful, this cool, this fast. If you guys have learned anything new, make sure you hit the like and subscribe. If you need to get your Adobe subscriptions, it's down in the link description. You'll help the channel out by getting the affiliate link version of it. And yeah, with that said, make sure you share it, like it, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.